Hello once again, Internets. Today's Magical Electrical Lantern Box show is about how TiGP performs tournament selection on the thousands of programs being involved within its confines. In an earlier video, we discussed how it is that one program is accounted as more fit than another, but now we'll investigate how fitness influences mating and replacement of programs within the population. Instead of speaking about problem dat file definitions and tree stages, let's move our level of analysis up a bit and just talk about programs. Recall that each program is the whole collection of stages where every input field, both the variable values and the targets, are evaluated into an overall fitness value. From now on, we'll assume all the definitions and evaluation stages are already built in to our discussion of a given program at hand which we'll represent by this robot icon. Once TinyGP has generated all of its programs, at each subsequent generation there'll be some odds that a given individual program gets the chance to cross parts of its program with parts of another program, this process being called subtree crossover, which we'll cover in a later video. Suppose the individual marked by a red circle in the lower right quadrant of the program population indeed gets selected. Next, a competitor gets selected, here marked in green. If this competitor has higher fitness, then it'll be selected as a parent, that is, it wins the tournament, so to speak. And, of course, if the red has higher fitness, it will be selected. Tiny GP also has an option to allow more than one competitor to vie for a parent slot. The default tournament setting is two, which you saw a moment ago, but a bias toward more higher fitness individuals would occur if multiple competitors were allowed to vie for becoming parents. Here we see a tournament size with five competitors. However, this might create a drop in diversity. It's always a balancing act in genetic programming. Well, eventually two parents are chosen and a new individual program is formed. This new individual will receive its particular tree components from the result of a crossover between the trees of the original two parents. As with all programs, this new individual will be given a fitness value. The next issue is to determine how the new individual gets placed into the population. Now, however, a new kind of tournament gets applied in Tiny GP, the negative tournament. As in the earlier tournament, two or more individuals are selected and their fitness values examined. Here we have indicated these individuals in red. Now, however, Whichever individual has the lowest fitness will get booted, and the new individual will get placed within the population. Note that every individual program in the population will become a parent in some way, whether by crossover with another program, or by merely having its own program slightly mutated, a topic which we'll cover in a later video. But whether by crossover or mutation, though not both, is just odds and never a guarantee which will happen. When every program in the population gets its chance, that's when generation N is complete. At that point, the whole process begins anew with generation N plus 1. Here's a quick look at the source code from TinyGP, a selection from the Evolve method with some trivial emissions to make things a bit more clear to follow. Here, you can see that if a random number function falls within the threshold of the preset crossover probability, then an index to two parents gets selected from the tournament method, which takes an array holding all the fitness values of the programs as well as the tournament size. Those indices are then given to the crossover method to get the new individual back, which itself, like all the other programs, is a character array. If the crossover didn't fall within the threshold, then otherwise a tournament occurs to find a single parent on which to perform mutations. This would thereby produce a slightly different individual than that single parent. After this, we see a call now to the negative tournament method where some relatively weaker individual is selected so as to determine where to place the individual just created. That returned offspring index value is then used both to replace that older, relatively weaker individual in the population with this newest program just created and to store that newest program's fitness into the fitness array where all the other programs fitness values reside. Next we have the two 
tournament methods mentioned a moment ago as called by the Evolve method. Each starts with an initial floor or ceiling value to get everything going for the first program to slip into either the best or worst spot respectively. Both routines make a number of comparisons based on the desired tournament size to whatever happens to be the best or worst program fitness on the record for the moment and makes replacements when necessary. In the end, an index value is returned, respectively, for the best and worst programs found in the tournament. Hopefully, you can now see the answers to the two questions we started with, namely, how does the fitness value affect program mating with other programs, and how does the fitness affect the odds for being replaced by newly created programs? The answer to these questions is essentially the same. Fitness affects the selection procedures applied in the two different kinds of tournament methods.